Starting with the unboxing, once you open the package, the device itself is on top, with the manual and a 65 watt charger underneath, plus a cardboard insert that can double as a paper stand. This design is actually pretty eco-friendly and practical. Now, let's enjoy that satisfying moment of peeling off the protective film. The Dragon logo on the back is still as striking as ever. Compared to the previous Claw 8, the A8's lines are noticeably sharper, less rounded, more angular. The front sides are also chamfered, making it look slimmer than the chubby Claw 8. The back of the A8 also features a rugged, masculine line design. My first impression when holding it was that it doesn't feel particularly smooth in the hand. When gripping it, the knuckle of my ring finger feels a bit pressed. If you adjust your grip a little and avoid squeezing with your ring finger, it feels much better. What really surprised me, though, were the back buttons. Their tactile feel is much better than they look. Your middle finger can rest on it very naturally, and the joystick and button feel on the device are also spot on, comfortable and responsive. These days, there really isn't much to complain about when it comes to the button feel on handheld consoles. The device weighs 759 grams. It doesn't feel particularly heavy, and even after long use, it's still acceptable. Ports include two USB-C, one USB-4, one TF card slot, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. It comes with a 65 watt charger, and the device only supports up to 65 watts charging. Under maximum load, this is insufficient, for example, drawing 35 watts still cools power from the battery. The screen is the same as the Claw 8, 1920 by 1200 resolution, 500 nits brightness, 120 hertz refresh rate, and native landscape orientation supporting VR. Not much more to say here. The speakers support DTS tuning. Let's listen to a sample. The sound quality is clear, and the soundstage is pretty good too. With an 8-inch screen, weighing 759 grams, and an 80WH battery, the grip feels fine, no issues. The Claw A8 is a top-tier handheld PC, but the real highlight is the ZR1 processor. Its specs are similar to the AMD HX370, but the ZR1's thermal design power ranges from 15 to 35 watts. I tested it one by one, starting from the lowest 8 watts up to 35 watts. Let's look at the CPU benchmark scores first. The Xilinx 2 Extreme uses the Strix Point architecture, with 8 cores and 16 threads, 3 Zen 5 cores and 5 Zen 5 C cores. It can easily handle multi-threaded tasks like modeling and video rendering. The base frequency is 2 GHz, with a turbo boost up to 5 GHz. Its single-core performance is also excellent in single-player games. Next, let's look at the integrated graphics with the RDNA 3.5 architecture. It has 16 GPU cores and a maximum clock speed of 2900 MHz. Its image processing capability stands out in benchmark tests, and it can even hold its own against the ATX 370. In theory, it should be able to run some AAA games smoothly. But how does it perform in actual game tests? I tested 5 games, Forza Horizon 5, Cyberpunk 2077, Tomb Raider, Black Myth, Wukong, and Monster Hunter Wilds, using their benchmark tests. I compared the percentage increase in frame rates for each increment in power consumption, as well as the frame rates that provided the best experience. At around 20 watts, performance boost per watt is high, but above 30 watts, efficiency drops off. The frame rate performance actually didn't meet my expectations. Compared to the HX370 running Tomb Raider, the ZR1's frame rate was slightly lower. Why is that? Clearly, the benchmark scores are neck and neck with the 370, so why is there still a gap in actual gaming performance? Let me explain it to you step by step. First of all, there's the driver issue. The A8 I have here is currently using the 24.30.46 factory driver, which is likely an early version. I've seen some users having trouble connecting to the GPU house. For those who play with handheld PCs, doesn't this feel familiar? The HX370 was like this. The ZR1's driver situation now is like the HX370's then, repeating the same problems. 
Plus, the latest driver after the public beta has a performance bug, requiring an AMD update. Why am I so sure it's a scheduling issue? Dong Gu, the creator of Taigen Chusho, also got his hands on this MSI A8 and released a new internal test version of Taigen Chusho. Using Taigen Chusho and Xiaoha, set to run at 2.5 GHz, with GPU frequency optimization set to dynamic. Dong Gu has already updated the current ZR1 frequency table in this version, so now we'll run the Cyberpunk 2077 benchmark again. Here are the test results. Manual optimization of CPU and GPU scheduling is effective. At this point, the frame rate performance is close to that of the optimized HX 370, which also shows that the current driver scheduling is indeed not quite right. Secondly, the fan policy is too conservative. Even at 35 watts, the airflow is still pretty weak. During tests, above 33 watts, I experienced overheating and frame drops. Opening the device, compared to the previous Claw 8, cooling specs were downgraded. It uses the same memory solution as ROG, so its heat dissipation isn't up to current standards. Even at high power, fan speed remains low. I've reported this to MSI, hoping a BIOS update addresses it, otherwise, this review might backfire. But with the current fan strategy, it's extremely quiet, perfect for gaming at low power consumption under 20 watts. I haven't done more thermal performance tests, so let's take a look at how the peripherals perform. I tested at 10 watts, 20 watts, 25 watts, and 30 watts respectively. The peripheral performance is still pretty good. Once again, the current MSI display is quick to pop up and run smoothly. Thanks to Microsoft Game Bar, the system interface pops up quickly, and controller operations are smooth as well. With the stronger TPU performance of the ZR1, this quick experience is much better compared to when the Claw 8 was first released. The front-end features are comprehensive, and MSI is actively working. There are a few minor display issues. For example, PL1 and PL2 settings in Scenario clearly designed for Intel. It seems like maxing out the fan speed doesn't actually take effect, and there are still a few small bugs. I've also reported some features I'd like to see added. Once these are fixed, it should be really easy to use. To sum up, MSI's Claw 8 series is a flagship product among 8-inch handhelds. It's pretty bold of MSI to release two models with different processors that are both niche and have overlapping use cases. The Intel version excels at low power consumption and high efficiency, while the AMD version delivers stronger performance at higher power levels. These two differently positioned products cater to two distinct user groups, even though what you can actually do with them is pretty similar. The Claw A8 performs well in terms of basic functionality, after all, it's a product from a top-tier manufacturer. Plus, with the national subsidy, the price is still quite reasonable. The main issue right now lies in software optimization. Once the drivers, front-end, and BIOS get updated, both performance and user experience still have room to improve. If